Hi, my name is Amin Uraba, I'm a geophysicist at BP, and in this presentation I'm going to talk about the impact of acquisition geometry, and more specifically, survey density, on the quality of your AVO and AVOA attributes using a decimation study on an ultra-high density survey on shore Jordan. Before I start this presentation, I would like to use a simple analogy to explain the motivation behind this work. So here on the screen, you see eight different scans of a famous painting called The Girl with the Pearl Earring, going from the lowest resolution on the top left corner, number one, to the highest resolution, uh, number eight, on the bottom right corner. So those eight pictures have been tagged with their resolution, size, and for different reasons, you can assume that high resolution pictures are always more expensive than lower resolution ones. So the question now is, given those eight different pictures, which one would you choose? Well, the answer is very simple. It depends what you want to do with it. If you wanted one for um, your social network profile, for example, you probably uh, choose number one. If you wanted one for a power presentation, you probably visually discard number one and two and choose number three. But now, let's say you work in a museum and you want to assess the storage condition of, um, of your painting by looking at the cracks in the, in the painting. Uh, so number three is probably not good enough for you and you probably need to spend a bit more money to acquire number six, which shows you the cracks in the painting quite nicely. So at this point, will you resist the temptation to spend more money and get number eight in the hope that it will give you more information than what you already have with the cheaper version number six. If you're curious like me, you probably, probably will get it anyway. And you get number eight, spend more money, and the image is a little bit crispier, but actually not really giving you any more information than the cheaper version number six. And that's what, exactly what we wanted to do in this study. Uh, we wanted to identify that turning point in the quality cost curve, if it ever exists, uh, where spending more money to acquire denser surveys might not be actually worth it. So the topics um, explored in this presentation or in this study are going to be, um, we'll see if we have reached that resolution limit we just talked about. And uh, often when we talk about resolution, obviously we need to talk about the frequencies, so we'll see how the frequencies are affected by, uh, by survey density. Uh, and also we'll look at an extensive list of seismic attributes, AVO and AVOA attributes, and see how they are affected by survey density. And we'll, we'll also look at the trace density and the fall. These two parameters often describe the survey density and see which one of these two will help you um, predict the quality of your, uh, of your seismic attributes uh, the best. And finally, we'll see uh, if there's any difference between acquiring your survey in a grid on a, or linear geometry, that's, that's nodal style and cable style geometry, and see uh, if each, uh, one, one of these two geometries are, be are better for your AVO and AVOA attributes. Before we dive into these topics, uh, let me introduce you to the Risha Ultra High Density Field Trial used in this study. Uh, so the Risha Ultra High Density Field Trial was acquired in 2011 in Jordan over the Risha concession. Uh, it covered an area of roughly about 64 square kilometers uh, with um, uh, using a 25 by 25 meter shot grid um, shooting over a 50 by 50 meter point receiver grid. This is indeed a very dense survey. We'll see in the next slide how, how dense is this survey. Uh, but thanks to independent simultaneous source technology, ISS, it only took us actually two weeks to acquire this, uh, this survey using um, 16 barbara size, which you can admire on this picture, sun bathing under the Jordanian sun. As I said, the apparent small size of this survey, uh, 64 square kilometers, has generated a huge amount of data, uh, more than 220,000 shots, each shot containing about 13,000 channels, uh, receiver gathers with more than 150,000 uh, traces, Overall, we're working with 3 billion traces, with a fall starting at 8,000. So just to give you, um, to illustrate the, the size of this survey, that's 64 square kilometers, which is roughly the size of central uh, Madrid. Um, this survey has generated as much data set as the 15,500 square kilometers of a standard 3D marine survey. That's the sixth the size of the neighboring um, Portugal. That's indeed a lot, a lot of data to QC, process, and analyze. Okay, so as I said, this data is, uh, is ISS. Uh, it, it was deblended prior to the decimation. So the first thing we have done after the decimation was to decimate the shots first. So we've created two groups, the original um, 25 by 25 meter um, shot group, and then the decimated 50 by 50 meter shot group. And within each group, then we have decimated the receivers using two different styles. The grid style geometries are presented in orange on the screen, where the uh, receiver sampling is the same in is the same in inline the cross line direction, and then the linear geometries presented uh, in green on the screen, where the sampling of the receivers is higher in one direction than the other one. So at the end, we have created 20 different geometries 
you process and analyze in parallel. So each one of these uh, geometries went through um, an optimized but common processing sequence designed to work both for the sparsest and the densest geometries. Uh, we have used state-of-the-art AVOA friendly processing, which included OVT processing, uh, one of the latest techniques in terms of ground wall removal and surface consistent solutions. And we have published, uh, we've, we've got a joint publication with CGG on, on this subject um, uh, last year. Um, just to give you an idea of the quality of this, of this processing, so these are looking at the screen, these are uh, the row stacks for the 20 different uh, uh, geometries we had. And this is the result after the uh, final migration. So as, as you can see, the processing is, 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 is very successful. And we believe that we have brought all those different geometries to um, uh, a, a comparable level, at least. So for each one of these, uh, of these geometries, we have generated an extensive list of uh, pre-stack and uh, post-stack attributes. And the pre-stack attributes included AVO attributes like the in, uh, intercept and gradient, and also AVOA attributes like the phi angle and percentage and isotropy, etc. So we had about 30, um, 30 attribute volume for each one of these decimations. Okay, so let's dive into the results now. First of all, have we reached the resolution limit in this study? Well, to answer this question, we're going to be comparing the densest survey, that's the undecimated one, to the closest survey to it in terms of uh, fold, and also the closest survey to it in terms of uh, trace density. And that's what you're, what you're seeing on the screen now. So the top uh, row on the screen is actually the attributes extracted from the original survey, the undecimated one, so that's the densest one. The one in the middle is coming from um, the uh, closest uh, survey to it in terms of trace density, and the one in the bottom from the closest to it in terms of fold. From left to right, we're looking at a seismic section. That's zoom in into, into the seismic volume around um, a small fault called the Risha fault. You can, you can, you can probably see it uh, right in the middle of the, of the square. Uh, the second column is actually the time slice um, along that same level, uh, Risha level. You can recognize the Risha fault coming from the northwest to the southeast. The third column is the intercept um, uh, along the same, uh, that same layer. And the last uh, colorful display uh, to, the, to the right is actually the phi angle attribute, which represents the change in amplitude with azimuth. So each color in here actually represents a different azimuth. So let's start comparing from left to right. So looking at the seismic section, we can probably say that the two surveys on the top display um, a higher resolution, a better definition of the reshuffle than the one in the bottom. Moving to the um, time slice, at this point you might actually start seeing that the denser survey displays slightly better resolution than the two other ones in the bottom. But the interesting thing is as you move to more and more complex attributes, by the end you start looking at the phi angle, you can definitely say with confidence that the, uh, higher, uh, the, the, the denser survey display much better quality and resolution than the two other ones. And that's the conclusion you can make here, is that the resolution limit is not actually unique, it will depend on the attribute you are looking at. And actually doesn't appear to have been reached um, in this study at 25 by 25 meters, 50 by 50. So the, op the doors are still open for, uh, for even denser survey to see if that limit actually does exist. Okay, so uh, often when we talk about resolution, uh, frequencies are always the parameters we blame. So let's see how these frequencies are actually affected by uh, survey density. Uh, here we're looking at 10 different uh, frequency spectra of 10 different receiver decimation from the 50 by 50 meter shot. The continuous line represents the signal, and the dotted line represents the, uh, the, um, the noise. Uh, those different colors represent the different decimations listed in the green, screen, uh, the green square on the top right corner. So the first thing we observe here is that those, uh, the frequency spectra of the signal, they all seem to overlap. Uh, this is telling us that the survey density doesn't really change the, uh, the frequency content of your data set. But what is changing quite dramatically is the, is the level of the noise going up quite quickly with the, uh, with the decimation. And this has got a very interesting effect, uh, effect on the resolution. And to illustrate this effect, let's have a look at the lowest part of this, of this frequency spectrum. So here we're looking at the 4 to 8 hertz uh, panel for three different decimation going from the densest one to the left, the sparsest one to the right. Uh, the, the interesting thing we see, you can see here is that the low frequencies seem to be affected quite, quite a lot by this decimation, which is quite surprising because you wouldn't expect the low frequencies to need high sampling to, uh, to, be, to be meshed properly. But what we are seeing here is actually not the low frequencies disappearing, but it's the level of noise going up. And as it goes up, it's the first thing you start to cover is, is, to cover is actually the, the edge values of your frequency spectra, including your low frequencies. And to prove this point, 
we took advantage of the flat geology in this area and we have designed a kind of a tailored structural denoise on that low frequency uh, section of the of the Aspasa survey and we have managed to recover those low frequencies so as i said those low frequencies didn't disappear but they were kind of sinking inside that noise level and that's exactly what we would like to say here that dense surveys do not really change the frequency content of your data but actually extend the useful bandwidth by lowering those noise floor and giving you access to those edge values of your frequency spectra that you work so hard to have um, and including the low frequencies. Now that we have seen how uh, frequencies and noise are affecting the resolution, let's see how this is reflected on the different AVO and AVOA attributes. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we have extracted an extensive list of AVO and AVO attributes. And to quantify the, diff the, the quality of these different attributes, we have used presence correlation. So we have um, correlated each attribute to its, uh, to its uh, density survey equivalent. And this will ha uh, ha had given us a, um, um, a correlation factor between 0 and 1, which we are um, interpreting as a quality factor. So the densest survey is actually the reference and will always have a correlation factor of 1. Uh, and then what we can do, we can display those different uh, quality factors on the quality matrix. So here we are displaying those uh, quality factor factors. So green uh, is a quality factor of 1 and uh, red is a quality factor of 0. So here we've got a quality matrix of about 14 different AVO and AVOA attributes uh, displayed on the horizontal axis. The vertical axis is, uh, represents those 20 different geometries we have. And the first thing you can observe here is that different attributes display different sensitivity to decimation. To the left, you can see you've got a group of robust attributes, which won't need a dense survey to give you good quality uh, value, uh, attributes. And then you can, the block to the right, um, you can see these attributes are quite sensitive to, 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 to survey density and will need quite high density surveys to give you values that are even meaningful. And that kind of reminds us a little bit from the, of, of the analogy we have used at the beginning of this presentation. Um, the, the, um, the density of your survey will depend on the attributes you are trying to measure. However, we have, um, we have observed another layer of complexity uh, to this sensitivity, and it's, it's the fact that it also depends on the strength of your target horizon. So here we've got those, that's exactly the same um, uh, quality matrix, but now extracted on three different horizons that have got different qualities. Uh, and you can see the, the, the quality matrix on the bottom extracted from the port horizon, which is a very strong continuous horizon, very high signal to noise ratio. You can see that you would need quite uh, um, a low, low density surveys to give you good quality attributes compared to the one, uh, uh, the, the quality matrix extracted from the UMSAM, which is the horizon in the middle, which is a kind of a weak horizon um, with a lot of uh, discontinuity and, um, and uh, low signal to noise ratio. And you can see that this attribute would need a much higher uh, uh, density to give you equivalent qualities. However, the, the relative sensitivity of these different attributes to each other stays the same. And that's what we are, uh, that's the conclusion we can make here is that the sensitivity of decimation varies with attributes, but also with the, with the strength of your target horizon, but the relative sensitivity of, of these different attributes to each other stays the same. Okay, so survey density is, all, is always described by, by either the trace density or the fold. And let, so let's say which one of these two parameters will help you predict the quality of your attributes the best. So what we've done here, we have taken all those different quality attributes and we have, plot, uh, uh, we have plotted them on uh, a, a spider plot. So each radial in the spider plot represents a different geometry. So you've got 20 radials for 20 different geometries. And then each radial is scaled from 0 in the center to 1 in the, uh, at the edge of the circle. And then what you can do, you can plot those different qualities on this uh, spider plot. So the different colors represent the different uh, attributes listed on the uh, right-hand side of the, of the slide. And then you can do something quite interesting. You can reorder those radials in any order you want. So what we've done here, we have reordered them in a fold order, going from the lowest fold uh, at, um, at 12 o'clock. And then clockwise, you increase the fold. And you can observe something. You can observe uh, a, a correlation between the increase in the fold and also the increase in data in, in the attributes quality. As you can see, there is a kind of a spire look to the, to the spider plot. However, this in, this correlation is not very sturdy. You can see lots of ups and downs as you go to the densest uh, or to the highest fault survey. And if you do exactly the same exercise, but this time reordering those radials in a trace density order, you can see that you've got a much better correlation of 
uh, of uh, the trace density with the quality of the attributes as you, as you got this much um, uh, steadier uh, uh, spire going from the densest, uh, the, the lowest density survey to the highest density survey. And that's actually, is telling us that trace density is actually a more important quality indicator than the fault. Okay, so now that we've seen that trace density is, um, is good for your attributes and resolution, well, let's see which way we should acquire it. Should we acquire it in a grid sense uh, or a linear sense? So that's cable style or, or uh, nodal style geometry. What to do to answer this question again, we're going we're gonna to compare two different geometries that have got exactly the same fold, exactly the same trace density, but one is grid and the other one is linear. So the same thing as we've seen earlier, from left to right, you've got a seismic section, a time slice, an uh, intercept, and the phi angle. And I can, uh, you, you can spend about 10 seconds looking at this, and you can spend more time actually by looking at the e-lecture later. There is, the difference between the two is very small. You can always find smooth, small patches that are better than the other for each attribute, but actually these are very similar, and we haven't seen a significant difference between the two. And to verify this point, we have created another quality matrix, this time for six different attributes and for uh, four different geometries that, uh, have, that are of different styles, grid and, and, um, and linear. And you can see the two geometries that display exactly the same trace density display nearly the same data quality, well, attribute quality, uh, um, regardless if they are grid or linear. So what we can say here is that actually, at least in wide azimuth surveys, the same as the, the Risha, uh, survey in here at same fold same trace density it doesn't matter if you acquire your survey in a grid or linear sense you're going to get the same attribute quality well to conclude uh, we've seen that the resolution limit is actually not unique and it will depend on the attribute you are trying to measure and also it doesn't seem to have been reached uh, in this study at 25 by 25 50 by 50 meter we've seen that dense surveys do not really change the frequency content of your data but extend the useful bandwidth by giving you access to those edge values of your frequency spectra that you work so hard to, to, to acquire, uh, to get in the acquisition, including the low frequencies. So this idea of low frequencies not needing a dense survey is actually not true in a noisy environment. Also, we've seen that the sensitivity to survey density varies with attributes and also varies with the strength of the target horizon. However, different, um, the, the relative sensitivity of these different, different attributes to each other stays, uh, stays the same. We've seen that trace density is a more important quality indicator than the fold. And finally, we've seen that at least in wide azimuth surveys, at same fold, same trace density, it doesn't matter if you acquire your data in a grid or linear sense, you're going to get the same quality. So I would like to thank BP and the Jordanian Ministry of Energy for allowing us to show this work, CGG for the processing and, um, and attributes. And I would like to remind you that the first part of this project was presented at the EAG 2014, and you're very welcome to go and have a look at the, at the paper. But thank you very much for your attention and for watching this e-lecture. Thanks.